So a lot of neurodivergence, such as myself, I, I am a prime example of this. We speak in metaphors. We speak um, we speak on the topics that we love and hold dear to our hearts. Often when having normal mundane conversations with, with everyone and anyone. Um, not because we're narrow-minded or we have tunnel vision or we're self-centered or however you want to phrase it, but because the things we love, if you pay close enough attention, actually lays a framework for everything we do in life and anything we will ever do in life. Like for me, my music, my poetry, my photography, um, when I run, I'll, I'll actually start with that one because that, that one's a really good example. I, when I came home, I needed something as a workout, something that would keep me physically active and I decided to start running. That's very quickly turned into therapy. Now, when I run, I I will get to a point where I just start crying and I will start zeroing in on anything and, and everything that is possibly wrong with me. If there's anything wrong at all, if there's nothing wrong, wrong at all and I'm having a good spell in my life, then I'm just running. I'm running, I'm meditating, I'm making sure that everything up here is where it needs to be and is operating how it needs to operate. So that, and then that carries on to everything else. That carries on to my photography. Now when I go for a walk, I can see the true beauty in a leaf or a flower or the sun rising, the sun setting, how the clouds are looking a certain way, um, the shadows of the trees, cascading across the, the road a certain way you know it's and then from that it carries me on to my poetry now I can go back look at this picture and say this poem invokes a certain emotion and I want that emotion to be heard cue the poem and then from there I look at a poem I had a book on my nose. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep it. Um, that poem will then carry me to the piano. Because now that I've written this poem and I've read back over it, it makes me feel a certain way. And that is then transposed and trans transcribed into a musical piece. Sometimes it's not a, a song at all. It's just beautiful ramblings across the keys, you know? And so what, neuro, what not, I wouldn't say all, what some neurotypicals view as being narrow-minded, it's not, it's just for us to process the world better and more fluently and less arduously, we tend to stick to things that we are familiar and the things that we love will find those familiar things for us. Like running. Now that I am comfortable enough to go out on a run by myself and meditate and work through all of this, I can speak to a therapist. I can speak to anyone, really, not even a therapist. I can go and talk to a stranger about what I have been through. And then that will lead to what they've been through. And we can now have a structured conversation about that. My poetry, my pictures, my music. I, because of the music that I play and create, I can talk about any, t any genre of music with anyone and have a good structured conversation about that. My poetry, I am not a master of words, but I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> So when I speak to fellow writers, that, again, adds to the conversation, the fact that I can relate to them and we can bounce ideas off of each other. Um, my photography. Not only do these uh, pictures, these photos, show me the hidden beauty of the world, 
but it shows other people the hidden beauty and that strikes up conversations. So all everything that I love gets woven into this into this little I wouldn't even call it a rug because anyone can can see that rug it it's a little pocket square it's just a little napkin that I keep with myself so if I ever need to be reminded that being different is hard but great I just look at this and say you know what it is hard it is great but it's also beautiful.